On December 1st, 1948, civilians at Somerton Beach in Australia came across the body of a man. What they didn't know is that they had just stumbled upon what would become one of the world's greatest unsolved mysteries. Welcome to the Crafty Cryptid. Here, you can enjoy watching DIY crafts while listening to the darkest and most mysterious tales I can find. Welcome to True Crime October. Each week leading up to Halloween, we are looking at some of the strangest unsolved crimes on the internet. If you enjoy this type of content, click subscribe and ding the notification bell. I post these videos every week on this channel. Today, we're going to dive into a mystery that has confounded the world for more than 70 years. On the evening of November 30th, 1948, a number of people noticed a man propped up against a concrete seawall on Somerton Beach in Adelaide. His legs were outstretched and his feet serenely crossed. This struck many people as odd, considering the man was wearing a full suit and polished shoes, definitely not something one would wear to the beach. One couple remembered watching him raise his arm to light a cigarette in what seemed like a drunken movement, while another witness recalled seeing mosquitoes buzzing around the man's face. Every witness thought the mysterious person laying on the beach was just drunk, but in actuality, he had been dying. After his body was found the next day, police were baffled by the circumstance. There was no obvious cause of death. He hadn't been shot, stabbed, strangled, or drowned. In fact, he wasn't injured at all. He was smartly dressed, but had no form of ID on him, and all of the tags and labels of his clothing had been cut out. In his pockets, investigators found a railway ticket, a bus ticket, an American metal comb, a packet of juicy fruit chewing gum, a packet of Army Club cigarettes containing a different brand of cigarettes, a handkerchief, and a packet of matches. Puzzled by all of this, police turned to an autopsy report to try and verify cause of death. The attending pathologist noticed that the Somerton man's pupils were small and unusually shaped, and blood was present in his stomach and his liver. This suggested that the cause of death should be heart failure due to poison, but subsequent testing found no poison in the man's body. As this was only a few years after the end of World War II, and during the height of the Cold War, when Soviet espionage was a serious fear, many wondered if this man could have been a victim to a brand new poison that left zero trace perhaps employed by Russia. This, however, has never been proven. Later, police found a suitcase belonging to the strange man with the name T. Keen, spelled a variety of ways, in the labels of the clothing inside the suitcase. Police chased this name and thought they had found that the mysterious man was a Thomas Keene, only to have the real Thomas Keene walk into their offices later completely alive. Police ditched that line of investigation. The most baffling clue of all came several months later. A renewed search of the Somerton man's possessions revealed a small pocket sewn into the waistband of his pants. There, investigators found a folded piece of paper that read T. 
tamam should, Persian for it's finished or it's ended. The words were written in a distinctive script and were found to have been torn from a rare New Zealand edition of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, a 12th century work of poetry. The relevant copy of the Rubaiyat was in the back seat of an unlocked car the night before the mystery man's death. On the back was a cipher. In the front was a phone number. The phone number belonged to a former nurse. She claimed that, four years earlier, she gave the book to a man named Albert Boxel. Police, convinced that the mystery man was Boxel, were thrown for another loop in the weeks upcoming. Not only did the police find the real Mr. Boxel alive and well, but he provided them with the copy of the Rubaiyat given to him by the unnamed nurse with the phrase, to mom should, still intact. Though the nurse claimed that she didn't know the Somerton man, police reported that she reacted strangely to seeing a plaster cast of his face and almost fainted. With that lead exhausted, police turned to the strange cipher they found on the back of the book. But not even naval intelligence in Australia could crack the code. No! To date, the Somerton man has never been identified, and the cipher has never been cracked though plenty of internet sleuths keep the mystery alive as they try to solve the case today. Theories abound when this story gets brought up. What is most likely true is that the Somerton man and the unnamed nurse had an illegitimate child together, and after she rejected the man, he turned to unaliving. Other theories include that the Somerton man was actually a Soviet-era spy, that he was involved with the mob, or even that aliens were involved, and that's why no one can crack the cipher. What do you think? Leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. To be notified when I post next, click subscribe and ding the notification bell. I post once a week on this channel, and YouTube will hide my notifications from you unless you ring that bell. Leave a comment and a like for the algorithm. Thanks for watching, and come back soon, cryptids.